Hello Legends, Eldred here. Welcome to Velo Harmony. I'm following up the video I just made that talked about the different kinds of training, going easy and going very hard. That went across, it was very popular, people liked it. I felt like it filled, filled a, a gap that was needed on this channel. And I needed, today I got the idea to follow up that video with some technical information. So I went ahead and made a draft because a lot of this I had to keep down on this draft that I built to keep it consistent. We're going to be talking about the, the energy systems in the body because now we're talked about going easy and going through tempo to go hard, you know, going easy, going slow to go fast. And now you need to understand what kind of energy sources the body's using when you're doing different speeds. Just like when you drive your car, some cars have super unleaded, some cars run on leaded gasoline, some cars run on just regular unleaded and so forth. This is a, a good comparison because we, you now need to understand the fuel sources your body's tapping into when you're riding. And that will influence the kind of foods you eat. And that's why people talk about carving up and so forth and so on. So what I want to start with is talk about the three different systems in the body. We have an anaerobic system in our bodies. We have a glycolytic system or the lactic acid system and the aerobic system. Those are the three major systems. The anaerobic system runs on, uh, it has what is called phosphocreatine. Um, it's, it's ATP triphosphate. There are three different phosphates in the body. And it's a system, all the systems have limitations, all the systems have certain functions, and that's why I'm, I did this write-up. On my blog, I will put the link in the description. The details will be there for those of you who want to delve deeper, but I'm trying to keep it simple on this video for those of you who don't have, a time, have the time right now to go read the blog. So regardless of the kind of effort, I'm going to read some of these and then explain as I go along uh, the stuff that I've put together. Regardless of the type of effort, your body is drawing on the three systems, the anaerobic, the glycolytic system, the lactic acid system, or the aerobic system. Your body's always using pieces from those three systems all the time. All that happens is your body changes the percentage and the amount of energy that each system will contribute depending on the duration and your intensity. So you're always using from those three systems, but depending on how hard you go, the body shifts where it needs the energy from. Whether it's being a better sprinter on long climbs or hammering short steep hills, your energy systems can all be improved through training. When you're on the bike, all the systems are providing a portion of the energy depending on the intensity of the work. So when you're going steady, you're using a little bit of the fast twitch, you know, to keep that spin going, but not a whole lot. You're using a bit of the ATP, not a whole lot. You're using more carbs. You're using an oxygen system when you're in zone one and zone two. So if you were to do a 120 second sprint test, the first 10 to 15 seconds is fueled by the PCR system, adenosine triphosphate, producing a huge burst of power. But very quickly, it starts to fatigue. After around 10 seconds, then that system is completely used up so that the lactic acid system now takes over but it starts to fatigue as lactic acid accumulates by 40 seconds the aerobic system begins to kick in as oxygen has made it to the working muscles and begins to assist with the aerobic contribution of energy production so what i just read basically to, to explain it in uh, layman's terms you start a workout where you go balls out. You start to go. After 10 seconds, you're not using the energy source for pure neuromuscular power anymore, ATP. The body kicks in and now it starts bringing the lactic system because that system burns out quickly. You don't even have to think about it. The body, as you continue that effort longer and longer, you may be able to keep that speed 
or that effort longer, but your body starts switching energy systems. So it goes from ATP to the lactic system, then to the aerobic system. This is why you have to train all those zones. This is why in a micro cycle on Tuesday, you do your sprints. On Wednesday, you do your time trial training or anaerobic threshold. Then on Thursday, remember cycle not? On Thursday, you do your long steady distance, the aerobic. You have to train all those systems because every time you go hard, the body taps into all of them. If you never train them consistently, you will be limiting yourself. If you're somebody that's getting back into the sport after a time off and you've gained weight or whatever, spend most of your time in zone one to three. Don't spend a lot of time at zone three. That's like tempo. If you get there, I mean, you go over some hills, you'll probably get there. Don't worry about it. But your, your primary focus should be aerobic rides. Okay, so you're going to be looking at the aerobic system. That's what you want to focus on. Again, I said this is going to be on my blog. So go ahead and check it out. You can re read the write-up that I'm using here. I actually posted this paper out there. I will embed this video out there. So you can play the video on my website. Why it's playing, just read the write-up. It will help you. Okay, I'll, I'll have the zones and everything out there as far as which zone percentages, you know, that relates to what I did in my earlier video about training zones. Okay, so what I, what I want to explain here is you're trying to lose weight, stay in zone one to three. Three should be your cap if you want to lose weight. Now, it doesn't mean that as you ride and you get fitter, you start feeling better, you can't go above. But if your focus is losing weight, stay in zone one to three because that's where, that's where you burn the most calories anyway. Because even if you wanted to go faster and let's say, yeah, I'm trying to lose weight, I want to sprint, okay? When you start to sprint, you can only do it for 10, 15 seconds, if that. The body internally, you, you can keep going, the body will switch. It will come down. So why burn, your, why burn your glycogen and burn your ATP that needs five minutes to replace itself when it's not going to burn that many calories? I mean, how many calories can you burn in 10 seconds? So why go through the pain at this point? Wait till you've trained yourself aerobically and start looking like a gazelle. Then you can start working on those other systems. If you watch all the champions, when they, even to this current day, look at Chris Frew. When he goes to the tour, he is lean. You know what gets them lean? Not sprinting. Long rides. You get conditioned. It comes back to conditioning. Once you're conditioned, you can go fast. Look at a cheetah. Have you ever seen an overweight cheetah? Maybe in a zoo? Even there, I don't think they, I've seen one. Okay, that was thrown in for humor, you know. So you want to look like an antelope. You want to look like a gazelle. You want to look like a cheetah. You want to look like a greyhound. And once you get to where your body is lean, then you, when, you, when you start to go, all those capillaries you built while you were getting lean, you will really fly. Okay, so I, I did this video. It may not be the most exciting video to listen to, but... Uh, I wanted you guys to understand that there are different energy systems that the body taps into. So when you're doing the steady zone one, zone two, I need you to understand that you're still burning carbohydrates, but you're also burning fat. Your fatty acids are being activated and they're more activated in these lower zones. So there's no reason for you to go super hard if you're trying to lose weight because it's not going to activate your fatty acids until after 10 seconds. I'm not saying that if you like training your sprint, don't do it. But if you're trying to lose weight, the emphasis of all your rides should be long. And what can you do long? Zoom one, zoom two, zoom three. You can do that all day. Okay, the longer you ride, the more calories you will burn. You actually take food with you because you got to any rides over an hour you want to have food so you can replenish your glycogen you don't want to start burning your protein you don't want to start tearing down your muscles you want to burn the fats it's not your muscles that has you overweight it's the extra fat the body stores from the excess food that we don't burn we make our own fat and that's why when you watch people eating a lot of fatty stuff i always wonder why why do you need that because even if you eat the most perfect food carbs or whatever and you don't burn it the body converts it to fat so we make our own fat we don't need to be eating fat there's no point to it 
Keep that in mind. And next time somebody hand you some greasy, some heavy gravy, you're like, hey, I make my own. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I make my own. Give me something else. You know, when I have them, when I like fish. When they make a salmon for me and they grill it. Would you like this sauce? And well, let me see what this fish tastes like first before I taste the sauce. You know, think about it. They drown the stuff in sauce. That's what you taste in the sauce. You don't get to taste the flavor of the fish. The top chefs, they don't drown their stuff in sauce. They might put a little ring around it or something to decorate the plate. They want you to taste the food. It's those extra little condiments that we pack on. Because the body, you ate the food, you ate the, the condiments, then it said, okay, you didn't do enough work. I got to store all that crap. So keep that in mind. If you're, if you're not very active, even when you're active, you still got to watch what you eat. Otherwise, you won't. Your weight won't get to where you want it to be. I mean, I ride often, but I watch what I eat because if I don't, I, my weight will go up. Exercise does not give you the excuse to eat poorly. And I don't like to use the word diet because in this country, there's a big industry and people spend a lot of money and it, just, it doesn't work because they're not lifestyle changes. I believe in finding what you like that's sustainable, whatever foods you like to eat, and just eat a balanced meal and then become a part of your lifestyle. You don't have to call it a diet. A diet is food. I mean, what is that? So you're probably wondering, what's the significance of all this technical gobbledygook <laughs> that the elder's talking about? Well, let me relate it this way. The, the three systems I just detailed, the anaerobic system that uses uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, only lasts for say 15 seconds okay then you go into the lactic acid system that lasts say about 30 seconds to two minutes okay then after that you go into the oxygen system the body just switches it goes into the oxygen system so let's bring this to real world you probably know a bunch of riders out there and you've probably seen it in the group rides that i've, I've photographed and narrated you know riders that can go fast they don't last very long they go hard and then all of a sudden you guys catch back up to them then they're sitting in the back forever and you're like what was that all about that's what i'm talking about okay that day when i went for two and a half minutes i could have gone for five minutes i was not using atp the whole time when i initially got up to set that first gap that was atp that's when i said heart rate meant nothing Starting the gap initially, the body used ATP as long as it needed to based on my training. Because I'm saying 10 to 15 seconds as a gauge. If you train enough, you might be able to go 20 seconds. Who knows? Everybody's body is different. But I didn't need oxygen for that. I didn't need heart rate. It didn't matter. At some point, the body switches to another energy source, lactic acid system. Now, once it switched to the lactic acid system after 15 seconds, let's say, and I sat down, I continued to go hard. And when I talked about, oh, I saw my heart rate at 180 beats a minute, I'm going to keep the effort there or thereabouts. If I had not been training like doing the festive 500 and all the years of riding I've done, I wouldn't have been able to go with that speed after that initial burst for that long. I would have had to sit up. And when that guy was initially following me, that's what he was counting on. He thought I'd have to sit up. But my body switched. And when it switched... I had enough training in my body to where I had the capillaries that said, oh, okay, we can now switch to the next system, which is the anaerobic lactic acid system. So it starts generating lactate. After about 20 seconds, it switches to that system. Well, that system can burn whatever carbs they need, but at some point, it's got to pretty much start tapping into the aerobic system. So this system will go from 30 seconds to two minutes. I was gone there for two and a half minutes. I could have gone longer. Well, after two minutes or thereabouts, wherever my body needed, it switched to the aerobic system. I didn't slow down necessarily. I sustained the speed, but I was not using ATP. I was now going into the aerobic system. And because my aerobic engine had been tuned, my aerobic system reached high up. And what I'm trying to explain is, when you train, your aerobic system does not remain in zone one and two only. It starts going up to zone three, part of zone four. So as you train your body more and more, your aerobic range increases. 
that's what this, I think that's what you guys are going to be able to relate to. So initially, if you start training and your aerobic zone is just zone one and two, as you train more and more, your aerobic zone will extend to tempo. Tempo may have not been aerobic when you initially start training after a long layoff. As you train more and more and more, your aerobic zone becomes wider now. Part of zone four becomes aerobic. So when you see me in a group rise where I'm sitting off to the side catching wind, and I say, oh, I'm at the base of zone four and whatever, my aerobic zone is so wide that now part of zone four is still aerobic for me. I'm not, then for me, I'm not really going that hard. Well, what that means, it doesn't mean that zone four has changed. What it means is my body now has learned to use oxygen in more and more zones so that now I can save my rocket fuel, the ATP fuel, for very explosive efforts. Now I can save the 30 second to two minute effort for a different phase. It comes higher and higher in there. So that means most of my ride, I'm aerobic. I'm, burn, I'm still burning carbohydrates, but I'm using something that can go on forever. And how that translates? I can go fast, longer. That's what I've been trying to get to. I've been building the base to get you there. To go fast longer, you need to extend your aerobic capacity into the higher zones. And how you do that is by training. By focusing your training and doing the right efforts. That's the reason why people get coaches and other things, so people can nail down a training plan and, and get it pinpointed to where. So you could just ride your bike lots and you'll get there. But the point I'm trying to make is that don't think that because this zone four says that, oh, it's lactic acid zone, that means it's a bad thing. No, lactic acid is produced in all the zones. You know, ATP doesn't factor because it does not use oxygen, but the body has liked it. Liked it is just a byproduct. It's not a bad thing. You just got to get it out of there so you can get the nutrients in. So it doesn't block the highway for your nutrients to come to your muscles. So by training and extending your aerobic zones into the higher zone, you become a fast cyclist. That's what makes you fast. That's why you must go slow to go fast. Because by going slow, the body builds your aerobic engine and that engine just gets huge so with that i'm going to stop there and i'm going to let you know that you keep training and no matter what don't let anything stop you i hope this video hit the points that i wanted to make because it's very technical so be good out there and do not let anything stop you